fiction, science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime, LGBT, thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery with your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino. John Copenhaver and Al Warren. Heard on KCP 106.5 FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 105.0 AM Palm Springs. We have a special guest. We're covering uh, Zodiac. Um, we've tended to do that before. So, um, and this time... In the chair, we have uh, the author of Sighting In on the Zodiac Killer, Unmasking America's Most Puzzling Unsolved Murders, Drew Beeson. So, uh, Drew, that's a long name, but thank you for being here. I'm glad to be here. Um, so, you called the book Sighting In on the Zodiac. Was there a reason you called it that? You know, it's kind of a, a play on words, and I, I don't know if you had a chance to read it or not, but it is a person of interest book in this case. I know there's been quite a few of those in the Zodiac. I know you guys know this case well, which is going to make this a lot of fun. Uh, but it's actually a term that came from my person of interest, and I'll say who that is, Donald Lee Cheney. It's uh, a, a phrase I found that his son said that, that Don used for hunting, and it's called sighting in. When he would go hunt, and he's, he's a pretty avid game hunter, he would just call it sighting in. He wouldn't call it hunting or shooting. He would just call it sighting in. So that's where that term came from. Hmm. Uh, a Cheney with a rifle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get all started now. <laughs> yeah, I get Dick Cheney where they're shooting. shooting oh, people. yeah, that's true. Don't, don't get caught out in the woods with old, old oh, Dick. Dead-eyed Dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take some buckshot in the face there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, now um, coming to this book, why did you write the book? Like, what, what, what was it about the Zodiac and and all the books that are out there and all the theories and talk and all that stuff? Why did you decide to sit down and actually write a book? Well, uh, I didn't plan on it necessarily. I was really into the D.B. Cooper case a lot and and uh kind of you know kind of led me into the zodiac because i've you know, had a couple friends that were you know kind of into just the really well-known unsolved cases so i kind of put db cooper with the zodiac because it's just one of those massive ones that everybody is always trying to figure out and that, you know i've been on a couple podcasts with cooper and you know did pretty well with that and then after that was done i kind of felt like i had a void there and I went to uh, this guy's house that was local to record some voice demos. I was just trying to do some stuff outside of my day job and do some voice demos. And he said, well, you know, we're just trying to get to know each other. And he said, what are you into? And I said, well, I did a GB Cooper thing. And I said, what about you? And he said, I'm really into the Zodiac. You know, he goes, I'm just I'm obsessed. I'm totally obsessed with this case. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm into that case, too. And we kind of struck up a really quick friendship. And we did a podcast together, you know, because he, he had done a few different subjects. So we, we you know, within a week of meeting, we did a Zodiac podcast. So that kind of brought it all back to me. And I was, was always familiar with the case, but, you know, I started digging in a little more. And what really struck me with it about it all was, was this video called His Name Was Arthur Lee Allen. And, of course, you know, I had seen the Zodiac movie years ago and didn't really think too much about it. And, you know, I read Gray Smith's book and you knew it pretty well. And I knew there was a lot of crit criticisms of it. But I think that one video really struck home to me. In particular, Don Cheney's story just really seemed peculiar to me. This guy that comes out and says, you know, if you find any, if you find my DNA on there, it's because I like Dr. Lee Allen stamps. And I, that's the first thing that made my antenna go up. And it never went down. After that moment, I just dug into this guy. I mean, I, you know, I wanted, and, and at that point, I wanted to learn about all the other suspects. I just didn't want to be one of these confirmation bias guys honed in on one. I wanted to be objective as I could. And when I got on him, I just couldn't get off. So that's kind of where it started. So uh, now, so that's how it started. And um, now, Don Cheney, um, who who was he um, in, in the in the whole set of things? Well, as I'm, it, it, fortunately, you guys know this case so well, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners do, and for the ones that might not be as familiar with Don Cheney, he's the person that came forward with accusations about his 
his uh, longtime friend, whose name was Arthur Lee Allen, who was, of course, the you know probably still to this day the top Zodiac suspect due to Robert Gray Smith's book that later became the the Fincher movie uh, Zodiac. And you know most of the book is about our, you know Arthur Lee Allen, and we only really know about Arthur Lee Allen because Don Cheney came forward in the summer of 1971 with with claims that his friend is he felt his friend was the Zodiac killer. He said he had read a, uh, an article in the newspaper that, that had printed, you know, later after the fact there had been printed initially, one of the Zodiac letters that spoke about picking off little kitties as they come bouncing off of the bus. And when he saw that in the newspaper, it, it, it supposedly, according to Don Cheney, printed a memory. He remembered his friend telling him this on New Year's Day 1969. Now, that's another little caveat there. When he first started telling this story, it was New Year's Day 1968. But I think for his own convenience, he switched that date to New Year's Day, 1969. But as Don's story went, he went over to his house, you know, his friend Arthur Lee Allen's house, who was living in Vallejo at the time, of course, ground zero for the Zodiac crimes. And he, you know, was telling him how he wanted to become a, a you know, not work a regular job and become a, a killer for a living. You know, he wouldn't need a resume for that. He was going to call himself the Zodiac, and he was going to hunt people down on lovers' lanes and supposedly downloaded all this to Don, and it takes Don uh, two and a half years later to come forward with this information. So that's kind of how he, he enters the whole scene. He inserted himself into this case, you know, a, a lot of time later, but that's where he came from. He was a friend of Arthur Lee Allen through Arthur Lee Allen's younger brother, Ron Allen, who was a college roommate of Don Cheney at uh, Cal Poly in Pomona, California, which is uh, closer to Los Angeles. But that's how... Uh, Don met Arthur Lee Allen through his younger brother, Ron, and they became friends and, for the most part, stayed friends for about roughly eight years. And so how did you have any interaction with Don Cheney yourself? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, uh, Don Cheney passed away in 2009, and um, I never had any inter- inter- no interaction with him whatsoever. What, what was your take on uh, what you in your research and finding out things about him and and uh, re- and reading what he said and all that sort of stuff, uh, what was your take on Don Cheney? What what kind of a person do you think he was? Well, I could tell he was more intelligent than what he'd lead on. Uh, it interested me that he was an engineer. A lot of people thought he was a civil engineer. He was not. He was a mechanical engineer. Uh, more specifically, he had training. You know, he, he worked as a as a pipe stress analyst for a company called Floor for a while after he left the Bay Area. And I thought that was really intriguing because you know that, you know, obviously one of them, you know, the, 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 the Zodiac letters, he talks about radians in the Mount Diablo letter and inches along the radians. Well, that's definitely something that uh, a mechanical engineer is going to be familiar with is a radian. And I just felt that his background as a mechanical engineer really well suited what you would find in a lot of the Zodiac letters, not just the ciphering and the mathematical component, but, but all of it. You know, here's somebody who had pretty organized in thought and, and had that kind of mathematical background. I just thought, I thought starting off not only was that a good fit, but a lot of his phrasings I would pick up on, and uh, which is both, you know, he, the only interview I know that he did was his name was Harper Lee Allen. I mean, he did a few others, and then he did a, uh, a sit-down interview with Tom Boyd uh, prior to that. I think that was in 2001, and Tom put that, that transcript out on his website, and I would notice a lot of the phrases that Don Cheney used that you would see repeated in, in quite a bit of the Zodiac correspondence, uh, such as the word bouncing. Don would use that word a lot. We know in the Zodiac letter he talks about you know the little the little kitties as they come bouncing off of the bus. That's it's just a bizarre adjective to describe how kids come off a bus. He says the word bouncing, and Don would use that word. You know he would talk about. Uh, be asked by Tom Boyd in that, that interview they did, you know, wasn't Arthur Leon in the, in the Navy for a while, he said, and Tom would respond, yes, he was, until they bounced him out. So I would just see a lot of these phrases that would, that, that Don would use that, that you would also see that the Zodiac did. Another one is, uh, there's just so many, there's uh, Slip of the Tongue is another one. You see that in the Concerned Citizen letter that, the, that you know, was attributed to the Zodiac. We, you know, I know it's not one of the ones you can 100% say was, but people suspect Concerned Citizen letter was probably by the, the actual Zodiac where the cipher key was mailed in after Don Hart had uh, already submitted his uh, explanation to solving the first cryptogram, but uh, he used the word uh, Slip of the Tongue. 
that's another phrase that Don, that Don Cheney was using in the interview with Tom Boyd when he's talking about what he was polygraphed about his involvement in this case. So it's little things like that. It's both. It's the mechanical engineer background and, and the repeated phrases. And, uh, you know, the Ted Kaczynski, one of the main things that led to his capture was his brother seeing some of the, uh, the correspondence for the Unabomber. And he would see that, and the brother saw that and said, yeah, that sounds like my brother, you know, just by the way the words are written. It, it's similar to that. Hmm. Now, I think, uh, now, Michael, you actually uh, interviewed uh, Don Cheney, didn't you? Yeah, several times uh, back in 2006. Uh, he had already talked to Tom Voigt and Robert Graysmith and was, uh, I think he had talked a little bit with the movie producers, but he hadn't filmed that interview that Drew's talking about for the documentary. Um, you know, when I contacted him, I was hoping, and listeners who know me might be surprised to hear this, but I was actually hoping that he would be credible and that it would all make sense. Um, you know, I was I was hoping that he would clear up a lot of these issues and discrepancies so that, you know, we could accept his story because no one wants to believe that somebody might make up a story about someone like that. And it would be a lot easier if he was telling the truth because then that would mean that Alan was probably the Zodiac and the case had been solved and everything else. So I was really hoping that he would explain these things and clear up some of these issues. And instead, what he did was he shocked me repeatedly time and again by embellishing his stories m telling brand new stories and some of which seem to be based on erroneous information he was getting from robert gray smith's book so he was taking the book and like a lot of people assuming that the stories in it were true and then he would take one of these stories and embellish it without understanding that that story actually really had no basis in fact in the first place and one of those stories was and Drew is probably familiar with this, the story of the infamous painting party at the home exactly. of the Zodiac victim, Darlene Farron. He claimed that, in, in the, we should say for the listeners, in the book, they don't name Arthur Lee Allen. They, Gray Smith refers to him as Bob Hall Star. And he talks in the book about how Darlene Farron was being stalked by somebody, and then later on he insinuates that it was this person named Bob. And then there's this story about this painting party at Darlene Farron's home. And in the book, it says that a man named Ron Allen attended this party. And, of course, Ron Allen is Allen's younger brother, Ron. Now, Don Chaney apparently read that book, saw that story, and then started telling a story about how Ron and Karen had gone to this party at this house and used the details from the book and everything and said that they were there with Arthur Lee Allen. And, of course, when I spoke to Karen Allen, uh, she told me that her husband and that both of them had never been to this party. They had never told Don Chaney this story. And they also didn't believe that Don Chaney was telling the truth. And Drew can talk about this as well, but uh, there's a story that Arthur Lee Allen attempted to molest one of Don Chaney's children. And Ron Allen had reported this to police when they talked to him. He said, well, you know, Don Chaney confronted me about this situation. And so Allen's family believed that that played a part in Don Chaney inventing these stories. And so when I spoke to him, I, you know, like I said, I was hoping he was going to straighten things out. But instead, he made a much bigger mess. He was making these claims that he had never told police before and that he apparently was remembering, you know, later on that uh, he claimed that Arthur Lee Allen took him to the crime scene at Lake Herman Road and showed him where the murders occurred. He claimed that Allen had told him that he had been hired to kill Darlene Farron by Darlene's husband and that Darlene's husband was a drug dealer who was hiding his, who had a front business as uh, for vending machines to cover up his drug business and all this stuff, and none of which was true. So it just became more and more complicated. And then by the time he appeared in the documentary that Drew was talking about, one of the Vallejo police officers actually came right out and said, I don't trust this guy anymore. So that was a real turning point in things. And what Drew was talking about before is important because, you know, Don Chaney had said that this conversation with Alan, where Alan, you know, allegedly made these incriminating statements, occurred in December 1967 or, or January 1968. But then years later, 
when he was questioned about it, he was told that Arthur Lee Allen, he, he had claimed that Arthur Lee Allen had mentioned losing his teaching job during this conversation. But Allen lost that job, I believe, in March of 1968, which was after when he was claiming this conversation took place. So when he found out about that discrepancy, he changed his story to a year later, which had a lot of problems in and of itself. So Drew's right to point out that there was some self-serving uh, stuff going on there with him changing that date, and it casts a lot of doubt on the stories that he told. So, That's so you, you have that feeling as well, Drew. Like you're not. Uh, did you kind of get the same perception that he wasn't a very trustworthy person? Absolutely, he said a lot of things that that that, that uh, contradicted to themselves over the years. He was changing his stories, but what, what we're talking about now, you went right to the heart of the matter, Michael. Is uh, this, this thing about the molestation attempt, it's very, very important because a lot of people will just say, well, you know, we know that Don's made up lies, so what he's probably doing is just mad about that incident with his daughter. Don Cheney had one daughter and he had a son. And if you go by the, the dates, it's getting as close as you can. His daughter was born in late 64. And she would have been around three, three and a half years old at the time. That's really young, even for what R. Kelly Allen was going after when he got in trouble at, when he was a teacher at Valley Springs. You know, the, the kids were a little closer to nine, ten years old. There was no, uh, re, you know, reports at all of, of Allen going after anyone that young. And the incident was, was supposedly the daughter came forward later and said, you know, Uncle Lee touched my bottom. So this wasn't some full-fledged you yeah, know, attack, yeah. but it was a touching incident. So people just say, oh, well, Don's just mad about that. So he's just trying to get revenge. And, and it's like, well, it's, it's pretty obvious that this story probably never happened. It was just concocted for some reason, you know, to, to shift the blame over to Alan. Because I know Tom Boyd interviewed his daughter as an adult. She claimed it never happened. Uh, and from my knowledge, this story was never reported to police. But you are correct in the fact that, that Don did say something to Ron Allen about it. And uh, it just it, it doesn't hold any water. And even by Don's own admission, he stayed friends with Arthur Lee Allen for six months up to a year and a half after this alleged incident with his daughter. So there's just if he was that mad about it, why is he going to wait so long to pin his friend as being the Zodiac killer and and, and even picking that crime out? It, it just it doesn't add up. So the whole molestation thing is really a, is a ruse. You know, of course Arthur Lee Allen was a child molester. No one's denying that, but. This incident with Don's daughter is simply, I think, just concocted, is is making Arthur Lee Allen into the perfect patsy to commit these crimes. That's that's kind of my whole thing. Well, it's and it's also possible. I mean, I, I agree that is a possibility, but it's also possible that nothing did happen, but Don Cheney thought something happened, and because he didn't have you know absolute proof, he didn't end their relationship. But it seems pretty clear that when he confronted Ron Allen about it, he was pretty upset. So whatever he, whatever really happened, I don't think we're ever going to know, and I don't think anybody, you know, someone who was that young may not even remember an incident like that. Um, I'm not casting any aspersions on anyone. I'm just saying, like you're saying, the story's kind of a, uh, we don't really know what to do with it because there's no confirmation of it. We don't have any dates or details, no information, no police reports, nothing. So it's just a story. And when you look at Don Cheney and the rest of the stories he tells, he tells it's obvious that there's some credibility issues there. Any credibility? Yeah, you're, you're correct. I mean, the, the incident could have happened. I mean, I would I would not sort of trust the Arthur Leon around my daughter or any. Yeah, issue. yeah, exactly. That, but you are correct. We don't we don't know. It's, a, it's with a lot of things with this case, but you know, we do know that Don stayed friends with him after that incident. So if you were that mad about it, why would you stay friends with him? Which is it's it, which is pretty apparent. I mean, that, yeah. that they were still communicating to that point. Uh, so it, it it does bring up a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of you know, more unanswered questions, it and it does. brings up a question too because he supposedly said that one of the reasons he stopped hanging around Allen was because he was so disturbed by these comments he made about wanting to kill people. So it's interesting. Like, well, he molested one of your children, but that wasn't enough to end your friendship. But then when he alluded to maybe murdering people, that was. So it's it's a he he's a problematic person all around, whether or not you believe it, you think he was involved, whether you think he wasn't, whether you think Alan was the Zodiac or whatever, no matter what, in any scenario, Don Chaney has a lot of credibility issues. He has heavy credibility issues, and I always go back to the statement about the, the licking of the stamps. Now, I've seen a lot, and, and, and Michael, you might know, or, both, or Al, you as well, or both, uh, there was these stories about that 
kids in the neighborhood would lick stamps for Arthur Lee Allen in the neighborhood. I've seen yeah. that bandied about quite a bit. I've never seen where that actually came from. I've never seen an actual interview with a kid from the neighborhood. And it's neither here nor there, but it's pretty interesting. But I always thought, why would Don claim to have done this? Obviously, he, it came out when he knows they were DNA, you know, doing the DNA test on the 1969 letter that was sent to the San Francisco Chronicle. So Don's obviously worried. Why would he say that? If it's just to pin Arthur Lee Allen, he knows they're not going to find his DNA. But if he says, well, I like your stamps for him, well, obviously the natural reaction is going to be, well, let's get your DNA sample, Son, because if you're sure that you were looking at you know, Arthur Lee Allen's stamps, then we know we're going to find your DNA. There is really no other reason other than fear that his was going to show up to, do, to make that statement to me. I cannot think in, in any circumstance why he would make that statement uh, if you didn't have honest fear. That you're well, I don't, I don't know why you find that letters. suspicious, Drew. I mean, you know, he's just telling you, yeah, my DNA might be on a serial killer letter. I mean, <laughs> that's exactly. completely suspicious right off the bat. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and it wasn't just the DNA. It was the, the thumbprint as well, where Don would tell the story of, of, of Arthur Lee Allen saying, you know, hey, here's this ball of paraffin wax, which is basically a you know, candle wax that would yeah. take a, an imprint of your, your fingerprint. And Don would just stick his thumb on it for him with no questions asked. Yeah, so I did what he asked me to. I just stuck my thumb right in there for the wax for, for yeah. him. And Why it's interesting, too. He wasn't worried about his fingerprints showing up. Yeah, and I was going to say, it's interesting, too, that these stories about other people looking stamps for Alan only surfaced when DNA became an issue. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, no it's one really mentioned it. And if you think about it, if, if Don's DNA did show up on one of the letters, uh, he already had an out. Like, hey, I'd already told you it's because I licked the stamps. I mean, what are you going to do to me? Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant. I mean, it's simple but brilliant. He's covering his ground there, obviously. He's covering it. Well, from, from a person that doesn't know the case as well as you guys, how did the police react with... Uh, with Mr. Don Cheney, and did they investigate him, and, and what was their findings if they did? Well, he wasn't really looked at that closely until uh, Detective Leo Detective George Power took over the case by attrition, as he says. He's also featured in that video, and they talked quite a bit about that and looking at Don, and I think it's when Don did make the statement about his DNA showing up is when they, when they did start focusing on him, and and his DNA was tested. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly when, but it was. And, of course, it was negative. So it was Arthur Lee Allen's and anyone else that's ever been tested. We know that. And, you know, we kind of found out later, and I don't know if Michael could speak better to this, but that they found that the DNA came from outside the stamp, which kind of put everything back in play as far as DNA went in this case. I mean, for that matter, Arthur Lee Allen's back in play. If you can't definitively say it came from the back of the stamp, we're still in play, and, and as most people know, the DNA they do have is pretty weak. They have four out of nine markers with the San Francisco uh, Police Department sample. I know that Alejo was trying to develop a, a DNA profile a couple of years ago and never came out and said that they were successful in doing that. But it was that comment did put him on the radar, radar of, of, of uh, Detective Bauer, and that led to Don Cheney taking a, a polygraph. Don was living in Washington State at the time, they set the, the, the first polygraph for him to take up. I think it was uh, someone from uh, the FBI from the C, uh, big Seattle office came in to, to administer the test, so I'm sure it was done right. Well, Don's response was to get extremely drunk the day before this test was scheduled. So when he came in, he was so hungover, he couldn't even take the polygraph. Knowing that he had this test the next day, why did he choose to get drunk? I mean, beyond comprehension the day before this test. He's obviously worried about something. Now, the test was re-administered later, and the, and the results of that were inconclusive, to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. But when you add the finger, the thumbprint, the DNA comment, and now getting really drunk the day before your scheduled polygraph is going to you know, show that you're either telling the truth about Alan or you might have some involvement. It's just uh, there's a lot of smoke here. Yeah, and you mentioned Bowert was the person who was – uh, involved in reinvestigating that, Bowert was the person who expressed his doubts about Cheney's credibility in that documentary. Absolutely. That, yeah. Well, so, what is it um, other than that? Like, what what about his personality, and what about Don Cheney? Do you think would lead him to be Zodiac? Uh, not 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 talking like how we're getting into evidence, but as a person, uh, what? What makes you think he was a killer and and planned these killings and tried to do these things? 
Is there anything? You know, outside of a lot of strong circumstantial evidence, this is what everybody has, whoever their suspect is in this case that we all know. Uh, you know, there are things about his personality that are odd. One, he's inconsistent in his stories. Uh, two, he does he does have an odd personality. One, he's, he's intelligent. He really is. He, he's good at camouflaging that. Kind of such as the Zodiac would do in his letters by misspelling you know, misspelling words that were obvious that, that, that he wasn't a bad speller because you would find the same word spelled correctly somewhere else. It was obviously he was, Zodiac was misspelling words to, to throw off people for his intelligence and is my belief because Arthur Lee Allen misspelled words for comedic effect and he knew that would be a good backdrop. But, but it, I mean, going back to that, in Don's personality, as far as I can tell, it, it is strange. You know, he was, this is more information that I found out that wasn't in the Zodiac domain, was that he was estranged from his family. Uh, he stayed married to his wife, but his family moved to the East Coast when, when I think, you know, his daughter was probably about 13 and his son was about 11 or so. And they just, they, they lived on separate coasts. So, in, and even when they were married and the children were younger, he was, I, from what I found out, he was never really around. Just separated from his family, would fight a lot with his wife, maybe had some issues there, I don't know anger or whatever and another thing i found out is he would never he was never able to hold a job despite being trained as a mechanical engineer he was always job hopping i don't know what exactly was going on with his jobs but i don't know if it was authority or there was something going on because he was always trying to make a living but if you look at it he's had just numerous jobs he sold insurance for a while uh it, he, apparently he was going to a lot of different power plants looking for work so he's a, a very intelligent guy who, who definitely knew his craft and, and was smart, but he, he, he could never hold a consistent job. Uh, he, like I said, estranged from his family. So there was some things there about him that would lead you to believe it could be this kind of person that had either some anger or some isolation or, or things like that. So what's the, um, now in the Zodiac community, uh, how, how has the response been, and, and have you heard any follow-up or backlash yet? You know what? I was surprised about that because what really led to me doing the book was a YouTube video. And I did it about six months ago, and I was surprised how well it did. And some of the follow-ups to it didn't do well, but the original one did. It was, it was about a 30-minute, which is pretty long for a YouTube video. And I just I didn't go in real heavy, but it was you know heavy enough. And I just pointed out some things about Radians. I, I clarified the fact that he was a mechanical engineer. Pointed out, you know, some of the stuff in the letters, like the bouncing and, and, and the things, and, and just some basics about how this guy could be in. And I was really shocked that I didn't really get any pushback. I mean, I had some people, hey, what do you think about uh, Sullivan or Gakowski? And then you, got, you have some people that are really believe that Don Hart must be the Zodiac, and they'd be like, hey, you make a really awesome case about Don Cheney, but what do you think of him? Yeah. And I really got no material pushback. And in the, in the, in the Zodiac community, we call it, we know that's pretty rare. Uh, usually we get something pretty quick. I mean, and and I would and I did get a few questions about Don, and and obviously I I, I point out even in the book uh, some of the obvious things, and the biggest question would always come up, and in, 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 in any messages or my video, was if uh, let's just okay, okay, if Don Cheney was the Zodiac, why wouldn't he leave a piece of uh, Paul Stein's bloody shirt over at, 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 at Alan's trailer or Alan's house? Uh, you know, that'd be the obvious thing. If he wants, if he wants to frame the guy as Zodiac, and he's Zodiac, I'm sure he still has a little, you know, a little uh, piece of Paul Stein shirt, or one of the weapons for that matter. I just like the example of Paul Stein shirt. And my only response to that could be, and I'm not really trying to mold the facts to to to, to frame Don in my seat, but I would I would just think that, and it's kind of my theory that that Don Cheney didn't want Arthur Lee Allen to go all the way down as being the Zodiac killer and arrested, because then the game would be over. He cannot live actually through the crimes anymore that he that he created. I mean, the, the Zodiac moniker was actually probably bigger to him than the crimes themselves. Creating this, you know, this this person that whoever you think it is created this elaborate costume at Lake Berryessa, and I I, I love starting at, at Lake Berryessa is is just ground zero for me because Brian Hartnell is such a great witness. He engaged him in conversation. You know, Brian's a sharp guy, he's a probate attorney now. He's just and, you know, he, he had good presence of mind while this was going on. So I love Lake Berryessa and just that being a starting point for, for all things that could point to him. But it, it's just, there's just a lot there. But my, my point is, is that he didn't want the game to be over. Kind of like what it says in the Halloween card, you know, watch full of the game or something like that. Because if, if, if that's, that would be all it would have taken at that point to get 
Arthur Leon convicted, I think. It's just one piece of physical evidence, you know, like Paul Stein's shirt being found in his trailer, uh, to take him down. I mean, we know that, that uh, Arthur Leon's the only person suspect in the Zodiac case that has search warrant, uh, search warrant issued on. They found interesting things, but there was never anything directly linking them to, to the crimes themselves. And you have to wonder why is Arthur Leon still the number one suspect to this day. And the reason is because some of that evidence is so solid. You know, the, the misspellings, like uh, Christmas with two S's, the word trigger mech. You know, uh, Karen Allen said that he would use that term, trigger mech. And I know one of the, the things they try to tie in the uh, the Riverside uh, the letters into being a Zodiac crime was one of the words that, that, was, that was found in the Riverside confession letter, that, you know, obviously the murder of Sherry Joe Bates. And I think it was gurgling or something. It was, or, or, I'm sorry, the word is squirmed. I think the word squirmed is used in the, the, the Sherry Joe Bates confession letter from the Riverside murder. And you also see that term in one of the, I think the Zodiac, what they call the button letter. And they, and it was on one of the TV shows that talked about one of the things that tie, that could possibly tie in Bates murder to being a Zodiac crime. It's obviously, it's you guys and your listeners may know not, it's not considered a canonical Zodiac crime. There's four canonical Zodiac crimes. Um, but that's one of the things they say could lead Riverside to be in a Zodiac deal. But I thought, and, and one of the things they would use is it's so rare to see the word squirm turned up in the confession letter for Sherry, Sherry Joe Bates and in one of the Zodiac letters. Like the odds of that are something astronomical they say. Well, my contention is if you think squirm is, is, is not that common, what do you think about the word trigger mech is shortened showing up in a Zodiac letter knowing that Arthur Lee Allen used that term? And that Arthur Lee Allen would misspell words for comic effect, which everyone proved, including the police when they went there, found a note that said uh, needed to go to the store to buy eggs, A-I, spelled A-I-G-S. It's clear that the person writing the Zodiac letters knew that Arthur Lee Allen used a word like trigger mech and would and spell Christmas with two S's and things like that. It's just, there is so much there. It's, I can't even get my mind around it all. It's just, what are the odds of that? There, it's, it's crazy. Hmm. So, um, now, um, Don Cheney, you said he died. This is for the people that don't know. How did he die, and when did he die? He died in 2009. I can't recall the month right offhand, but he he did have cancer at the time. But I think what which was kind of a contributing factor to it. But he it's written he fell off his porch, and mm. it, and then it we listed you know cancer as being a uh, contributing factor to that. I don't know. Maybe he was ill from from having cancer, and it caused him to slip and fall off of, off of his basically fall off his porch that, that led to his death. Uh, he was cremated, and he was uh, buried at a place called Poets Creek in Idaho on the uh, Nez Pierce Trail. Hmm. And, so uh, so that he lived that long, um, why did he stop being the Zodiac then, do you think? That's a great question. That's a really great question. I, I don't really have an answer for it. I, I don't know what would have changed, because as far as I can ascertain, he was probably living alone. And uh, he's definitely still estranged from his family that he didn't have much communication with at all. You know, he's, you talk about you know him being upset over uh, this possible molestation attempt that could have happened to his daughter. Well, if he was that connected to his daughter, why would he just move to the East Coast since he was always bouncing in for his term <laughs> jobs anyway and be closer to his family? Even if he was you know separated from his wife, you think he would still want to be closer to his children? But uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know why he would he would have just stopped. I mean, we we know that for. For some reason, some of these people just go dormant, you know, kind of like a um, like golden state, just stop killing. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. he got involved with his family, he just stopped. People just assumed he was in prison, but I guess, you know, you find examples all the time where they just, it, maybe he was afraid of detection. So, so what but do you hope? stay pretty active. Yeah, well, that's, hmm. so what do you hope people get out of reading your book? If they pick it up, take it home, read it, what are you hoping that they uh, come away with? It just, it just, you know, it just, uh, you know, for me, it, it's. Uh, I, I just want to be on record, and, and hopefully they would understand that he is your your Occam's razor candidate for these crimes because you can take all this evidence against Arthur Leon, and that's the question I see over and over and over in, in the Zodiac message boards and things is, why won't Allen go away? Well, he won't because the, some of the some of the evidence is so solid against him. But when you have a, a candidate like Cheney, you can transfer that all over to Don, or, or a huge amount of it. And then you get into the fact that Don far better matches the physical descriptions 
when you talk about Donald Falk at the Presidio attack using the word barrel chested. Well, look at pictures of Don from 1965 all the way up to that video he did. His name was Arthur Lee Allen, which was late 2006, three, you know, roughly three years before his death. That is your definition of barrel chested, stocky like is Joe. You go through every, uh, I think stocky was also used by the Robbins kids at the Presidio, who obviously that's who, who the genesis of the, the Zodiac sketch. Uh, it's just a far better fit. It's just trying, I want them to try to, you know, in their minds, take away from it that this just makes sense. It's, it's the, the least amount of steps taken to find the, the, the most credible answer. Uh, you know, do I know, am I 100% sure it's him? No, I'm not. I mean, something could come out tomorrow and change everything. I just want him, I just wanted to forward the narrative of, yes, this is somebody that should be looked at and just, just keep it in your thoughts. You I mean, just keep it, you know, with, with the information you get on any of these other suspects that are popular today or not come forward tomorrow. It, I, I just, it's, it's mainly to take away that he should be up there with, especially when you talk about suspects like Gakowski or Sullivan, Don should definitely be as high up as they are, and he's not. That's, that's my takeaway. He should be is all I'm trying to get across. Now, uh, do you have a website or a place that people can come and uh, hunt you down and call you names? Uh, sure, anytime. <laughs> but it's, my, it's my YouTube channel. It's just under my name. Okay. I have lots of zodiac stuff on there, and some other things that, that are that are not zodiac related, but it's quite a, quite a, quite a bit uh, zodiac geared. Okay, great. So it, we'll we'll have that linked up, and the book as well. Now the book is available, I guess, in um, Kindle and probably any major bookstore. They could at least order it if they don't have it. Yeah, um, it's definitely on Amazon. Uh, and it's on Kindle, and there's paperback. I don't have an Audible on it yet, but that's in the works. Oh, good. Audible's good for us blind people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been amazing. Well, thank you very much for coming on and, and talking about this, and uh, we'll see what the follow-up is, and uh, we'll, we'll get a hold of you with that. Um, our guest has been uh, the writer, the author of Sighting In on the Zodiac Killer, uh, Drew Beeson. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it, guys. To find out more about our show, guests, or to listen to past shows from our archive, please go to www.houseofmysteryradio.com. The mission has been completed. The end! By George, he's got it! It is the end! I'll see you. If you're lying to me. I'll be back. This has been a production of Something Weird Media.